Okay, so, question of the week. Which is the real bad movie of the week? I don't know the answer because I'm not gonna see Madam Web, and you guys probably don't know the answer because this movie is very limited. When I say very limited, I mean that I was paying attention to this release, and I was looking up showtimes for a while, for like the past week and a half, and I couldn't find anything. And then I finally was, was like, alright, fuck it. I'm going to search it on VOD. I still couldn't figure it out. But I was able to find it. It was at one theater in my town. The furthest theater out. It was like a 30 minute drive to this theater. And nobody was there. And for those wondering why I went and saw this movie. Well, between this one and Madam Web. At least this one has a fucking shark in it. Which I'm gonna be honest, whenever an R-rated big screen shark thrower is coming out, I mean, I get excited about that. You know, like, why wouldn't I? But goddamn, guys, when I saw this trailer, and I saw how this plot was gonna come out looking on screen with this film, and I saw that it was from the makers of 47 Meters Down, I dropped all expectations, and I went into this one when I fucking could. Which I will say, I did look up this director's, like, filmography. I mean, I fucking had to. I had to. And what I will say is that this seemed like it was gonna be, like, this director's big break. But just how big of a break that was gonna be? Well, again, an R-rated big screen shark movie, those are always fun, right? Right? Well, guys, let's talk about No Way Up. So what I'll say first is that, as typical, like, horror movies do, which this does typically fall into that category, I mean, it's a shark survival thrower, what I will say is that, as horror films do, presenting, like, the first scare in the intro, it kind of got me. Not much to say as the scene alone, it is one of those scenes where it's like, there isn't a whole lot of context behind it, it's kind of cryptic, where you're just like, okay, maybe this will be explained later on in the film, which honestly, it kind of is when you think about it, but I say when you think about it because you just don't really give a shit about it as far as, or at least I didn't, as far as like what it actually is when it's revealed, but as a first scare and as like intros, like horror movie intros do, it kind of got me, and maybe that's just because it was really fucking loud. This is one of the loudest films I have ever seen in the theater. That is a positive that this film wasn't good, because if this film had been a good movie, I wouldn't have liked it to be just, like, ear-fucking me, because goddamn, guys, this was not an XD movie. This was not IMAX. This was just a shitty shark movie. Barely a shark movie, which we will talk about, but goddamn. One of the loudest films I have ever fucking seen in the theater. Thank God this wasn't a good movie. Or else that would have been just a worse fucking experience. But getting into the movie itself, what I will say is just that right off the bat, there was just something about this movie where it was just a fucking chuckle fest. I mean, these characters, they feel so fucking dated. They're goofy. They're written like characters in a mid-2000s straight-to-DVD film where it's like, okay, I can see that you're attempting to write these characters as funny at times, as supposed to be like cool or relatable. But even as films in the mid 2000s, like where their characters were written like this, it still lands like that, where it's just fucking cringe. Which I will say, interestingly enough, this doesn't feel like the actual dog shit film that I thought it was gonna be. I think it could land as that like goofy background noise 2000s straight to DVD flick. Had it been released then maybe you could tell somewhere that the actors here are trying as are the writers it's just that this film feels so dated and sure while it could i guess like land as that goofy nostalgia background noise film that you could just make fun of i don't go into r-rated big screen shark throwers for that like dude i'm really jumping the gun here but there are homophobic jokes in here. I couldn't believe it. For example, when uh, the scene is like taking place where they're or, like where the uh, plane is about to take off, there's this character named Kyle. Which hearing myself say that now, I'm like, a fucking course that's his name. When the flight attendant is like showing uh how to like properly like do the seatbelts and you know they're doing that like safety precautions that they always do that they're supposed to do, which isn't cringy, which isn't funny. It's just their job to make sure that we're safe. 
This guy's like dying of laughter, cracking jokes at the fact that this guy is doing this. And to make matters even worse, there was like a scene where the main character like drops something and then the flight attendant like bends down to pick it up and Kyle goes, Haha, yeah, he's probably used to being on his knees like that. And I'm like, that did not just happen. You did not just say, what is happening? Is this real? Absolutely fucking wild. But what I will say though, is that while this goes more into feeling like a 2000s dorky hard throwback film i also mean that in the sense of like these characters are just so fucking unlikable but going into that on a positive note like throwback 2000s uh shitty horror films i was looking forward to these characters dying like i always do in actual 2000s horror films which again this still isn't your complete dog shit dated film to release these days again there are times and like honestly maybe just like in general where you can see that this film it doesn't mean to be a shit film they're just not caught up to pace with how films feel today and the kind of shit that we generally don't see in films anymore that just doesn't fly these days like for example when it gets to that scene that point in the story where the plane does crash into the water just that alone like before seeing the movie and just seeing like the trailer and seeing that plot i was like all right that is obviously just like no way no one would survive this, this wouldn't be a movie. Hence why it's being as poorly received as it is. But for what it is, and them obviously trying their best and trying to attempt something salvageable out of a dumbass idea, you can definitely see that they're trying. There are times where they attempt at like addressing things and like explaining things regardless of how impossible these questions are to answer because it's just fucking nonsense realistically they do do that where sometimes it was to the point not only like in this scene but just like throughout the movie where i was reasonably impressed as a movie critic going into this film just picking it apart knowing that this is just bullshit of a story where if someone was watching this movie just like not taking it as seriously as i am just trying to find some enjoyment somewhere it is there again somewhere next there is sadly and disappointingly just nothing to really say as far as like the shark movie side of this film but what i will say is that sadly again like for example the cgi in this movie is obviously not very good had it been good as far as these people these passengers being stuck in this plane at the bottom of the ocean that whole setting is that like they're stuck at the very back of the plane where it's like the only part of the plane that still has oxygen that isn't like covered in water while the rest of the plane like looking forward at the full plane like down the walkway it is just covered in water and i thought that was like a cool aspect because it's like what used to be the plane is now just vast blue sea that you can't really see what's in it or what's beyond it and i thought like that was a cool fun idea but it's hard to get that full reward because of the cgi and that was obviously just like a huge fucking bummer but like obviously there are things in this film where it's like as dumb as it is there are things that could have worked had it not been like as shitty of a movie and like as dated as it could have been and, and that surprised me like for the 14 percent dated movie that this was and like with just how bad shit of a fucking dumbass plot this was there were times where I was reasonably impressed and like I could see that they were trying their best. There were scares that were like getting to me. There was like use of like shark thriller stuff where I was like, like, like the plane part. I was like, that could have been cool. They are trying. These actors aren't shit entirely. But fuck man, this is just such a dated film in every sense of the word. And that's just the fallout of this film. Also, like I said earlier, when I said the side that is shark movie yeah sadly that is not the biggest aspect of this movie it is more like survival thriller than anything which still like cool survival thrillers can be fun but again i went into this film expecting and wanting the r-rated big screen shark film that it was marketed as and it just wasn't that but before i end this review and like give my great i'm just gonna take this last jab at it as that shit like throwback goofy nostalgia film that it was and that is that there are some iconic mwah, lines in this film like for example when the plane crashes into the water mind you when it crashes into the water 
and they're at the bottom of the ocean and the shark is now attacking them? I shit you not. This is a line in this film. And this is not the only one I'm gonna say here. The main character literally says this. She says this. What is a shark doing on a plane? And I'm like, well, dumbass. The plane crashed into the bottom of the ocean. Dipshit. It's not like the fucker is still in the sky. Dude. <laughs> There's also a scene where like, a guy loses most of his leg, like, he is like, <clears throat> he could be a peg leg at this point, and like, when he loses the leg and like, he's panicking, everyone's like trying to, you know, like, help him out, he's all, how bad is it? And I'm like, well, your leg's missing, your, your, your foot's gone. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> And yeah, guys, while this isn't the worst that it could have been, and that, like, I was expecting it to be, I could only just give this, at best, like, a mix to negative review. So, guys, that is gonna do it for my review of No- of, uh, why did I almost say No Way Home? What the fuck? That is gonna do it for my review of No Way Up. Is it as bad as Madame Web? From what I just saw out of this movie and what I'm hearing as, like, from Madame Web, I think that this is the better of the two if you can find a like a showing of this movie and you're curious if it's like like which one's better between this one and Madame Web and maybe you already saw the Bob Marley movie yeah this is the better one of those two but guys just take it as you will this is still not a good movie but guys that is gonna do it for my review of No Way Up thank you guys as always for watching I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one take care